Have you ever wondered where the most richly priced stock markets in the world can be found? Well, you might think Wall Street, but trust me, there's more to this story. So today we are diving into the fascinating story of the most expensive stock markets all around the world. And we will look at a couple of very interesting data points and of course, valuation metrics. We'll uncover which countries' markets are the most expensive right now and why people still keep pouring cash into them. So I encourage you to stick around to also find out where the country you are living in right now is ranking on the list. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, hi there. My name is René Zellman and this channel is all about stock market investing. And this video in particular will consist of three chapters. We will start by taking a look at the actual data. I will then discuss why I believe that certain metrics that we are going to talk about today can be a bit problematic. And then finally, we'll of course discuss the implications of the data that we are going to discuss today for investors. So let's jump right into the actual data. So I recently came across a tweet by Norbert Keimling, who is a German value investor who is working for a German investment company called Taunus Trust. And he was kind enough to share some of the slides that he has created on his Twitter or X profile. So I'm just going to show you one of the charts on screen right now. And let me just briefly explain, well, the structure of this chart. So first of all, you see blue and red dots. The dots in dark blue, they basically represent the valuation of individual national stock markets, whereas the Red dots are sort of representing indices, such as DM stands for developed markets, EM stands for emerging markets. Then you see this big red dot called World AC. I think that is sort of a world index. And then you will also see other dots, such as developed markets in Asia or developed markets in Europe, the BRICS region, emerging markets in America. And I think that's about it. Then, of course, we have an X axis here and a Y axis. Let's start with the X axis. This one is showing or displaying the evaluation of the individual stock markets based on the Schiller-Cape ratio. For starters, the Schiller-Cape ratio is basically a means to measure how expensive or cheap an entire market is. And Schiller-Cape ratio stands for cyclically adjusted price to earnings ratio. It was developed by Nobel Prize winner Robert Schiller. And the idea is that you divide the current stock market price, the price of the S&P 500, for example, by the average inflation adjusted earnings over the last 10 years. So it's similar to the regular price to earnings ratio, but it's sort of attempting to smooth out the numbers by looking at a longer time horizon, because obviously earnings can fluctuate quite heavily from time to time. And again, for starters, obviously a high CAPE ratio indicates a more richly priced stock market, whereas a low Schiller price to earnings ratio would indicate that a stock market is relatively Cheap. And let's maybe start looking at the data through this lens, first of all, and exclude the y-axis, the price to book ratio, just for a second. So as you can see here, the average Schiller price to earnings ratio since 1979 was actually 20 times. So if you look at this line here, everything on the left, or all the stock markets on the left, they are going to be cheaper than the average price to earnings ratio, the average Schiller price to earnings ratio going back all the way almost for 50 years. And then on the right, you would have the more richly priced stock markets. And I think what you have to immediately notice here is that the United States of America and India, they are outliers. They are both trading at a Schiller PE ratio above 30, more than 50% above the historical average across all countries. And I've actually prepared two more charts on these two stock markets in particular. So here you see a chart that shows the price to earnings ratio of the Indian stock market, please be aware that is not the Schiller PE ratio, but the regular PE ratio of the Indian stock market. And you can see that we are far above the historical mean of around 16 times. Right now we are trading above 24 times. And similarly, if we look at the Schiller PE ratio in the United States, as of today, so today is September 18th, the Schiller PE ratio is standing at 36 times, which is 35.2% higher than the recent 20 year average of 26.6 times. And of course, this has implications for the expected future returns. According to Guru Focus data, the implied future annual return is going to be a meager 2.4%. But we'll get to this a little later. All right, before we move on, let me know which country you are living in and whether the stock market 
of your home country is currently richly priced or cheaply priced. Let's get back to the chart and maybe discuss which of the stock markets are more cheaply priced. Again, for now, we are just looking at it through the Schiller PE ratio lens. On the very left, you see countries like Poland trading at a Schiller PE ratio below 10. Hong Kong, Hungary, Brazil, and Turkey, they are also sort of trading in that territory. And then you have other markets like Spain or Korea or Germany or Belgium or Italy that also seem to be more fairly, maybe even cheaply priced, at least cheaply priced relative to the average Schiller PE ratio over the last 45 years. Then on the y-axis, we have the price to book ratio. And again, in this chart, I think it's a fascinating chart. You see that the average price to book ratio going back all the way to 1979 was actually 1.9 times. And in case you are wondering, well, what is actually the price to book ratio? Well, this time you would divide the price of a stock or in this instance of an entire index by the company's book value which would represent the company's total assets minus their total liabilities and i would argue that the price to book ratio is sort of your classical value investing metric to look at if you go back to warren buffett's cigar butt investing days well value investors back then would consider a price to book ratio below one sort of a benchmark for interesting opportunities and then again based on this metric countries like the united states in the year the switzerland or the netherlands would appear more richly priced while other countries many of the ones we have already mentioned appear to be cheaper now what's very important to understand is that of course valuation has an impact on expected future returns. And Norbert Keimling, who created this chart, he has actually done fantastic work on this subject in the past and has shown that, of course, the higher the starting Schiller PE, the lower the expected future returns are going to be. And we're now not talking about next year's expected returns. No one will ever be able to predict what a stock market will do over a 12-month time period. No, we're talking about 10 or 20 years. And what Norbert Keimling actually then did is he compared the current valuation of all of these stock markets to two extremes in the more recent stock market history. So first of all, the peak before the 2008 financial crisis. So what you can see here is that actually across the board, stock markets around the world appear to be rather expensive. And then in a next step, he actually compared or showed the valuation, again, of all of these different stock markets at the bottom of the financial crisis stock crash in spring 2019. And again, interestingly, or almost fascinatingly, you can see that across the board, almost all stock markets were cheaply priced. And of course, if you now go back and calculate the returns from these bottoms in 2009 for the various stock markets, and maybe the US market, in particular, you will see that your expected return, oh, not, not your expected return, but your actual return going forward was excellent. It was fantastic, which again highlights that starting valuations matter, even for broad stock markets, not just individual stocks. And just because I, I truly appreciate the work Norbert Keinling has done here, let me show one last chart that he has shared and some sort of the conclusion he also shared on Twitter. Here you can see the valuation of various stock markets relative to their own local history. And he concluded, how expensive is the stock market valuation to compare to local history? The US stock market is currently trading 31% higher than in the period of 1995 to 2024. In contrast, emerging America, developed Asia and emerging Asia are attractive, trading 29%, 21% and 7% below their historical valuation averages. Now, this brings me to the next chapter. I just want to briefly point out that personally, I believe the price to book value is not relevant in today's market anymore, or at least it is much less relevant. There's much more to investing than just buying low PE stocks, but also price to book value stocks. And in particular, I would argue that intrinsic value doesn't necessarily have much to do with price to earnings and price to book ratios. If we just look at the US, for example, in the US, you have many of the leading global tech companies. And many of these companies are not relying on tangible assets. They don't carry a lot of tangible assets on their balance sheet. If we just look at one company here, for example, Airbnb, this is a, is a platform business model and doesn't need much physical assets to operate its business. 
And as a result, this business is, of course, trading at a relatively high price to book ratio. So, for example, Airbnb, based on a last 12 month basis, is trading on a price to book value ratio of almost 10. At the same time, if we look at the actual earnings the business produces, it doesn't look expensive at all. In fact, it might arguably be trading at a relatively cheap multiple of around 16.5 times. So when I look for investing opportunities, and I'm a, I'm a stock picker, I don't in, invest in broad market indices. And just to be clear, there's nothing wrong about investing in a broad market index. But when I invest, I don't look at the price to book ratio at all. I look at the cash flow that the businesses I invest in produce and then either discount these cash flows back to present value or I put a multiple on it. And that's sort of how I think about investing opportunities. We can also just look at my portfolio and the price to book value of the companies in my portfolio. And you will see that the weighted average of the price to book ratio is actually six times, which is also far above what a classical value investor would consider attractive. At the same time, I believe my portfolio as a whole on a look-through basis is, is not richly priced. I would say it's probably fairly priced right now. And then finally, looking at all of these data points is of course interesting. It's interesting to consider, well, is an individual stock market like the market in the US or the market in India richly priced or cheaply priced? However, and that's one of the most important takeaways for you from this video. Earlier, I just said that you will not be able to predict what the market will do in the next year or two based on the metrics we discussed in this video. No, those only give you an idea of what the long term, 10 to 20 years or more, the long term expected returns could look like. But they are not, and let me stress this right here, they are not a market timing tool. In fact, I recently came across a very interesting data point that showed that less than 50% of all major crashes in the US, and major crashes here were defined as declines of the S&P of more than 10%. Less than 50% of these major crashes were preceded by an overvaluation signal of the Schiller price to earnings ratio. And this also is the conclusion that Norbert Keimling himself highlights. He wrote, Today, we are far from either extreme. So he is now referring again back to the financial crisis, the peak before the crash and the bottom of the crash. So again, today we are far from either extreme in many markets, but the extremely high valuations of the index heavyweights could hold great potential for disappointment, especially for passive ETF investors who focus their investments there. And what he's trying to say is that if you are investing in the US market right now, for example, you may be in for, for sort of disappointing long-term returns. I'm not making a prediction here, but chances are that say over the next 15 years, the US is not going to create as spectacular returns, the US market, as it did going back the last 15 years, which sort of brings us to, again, the bottom of the financial crisis in 2009. All right, and that's it for today's video. Again, let me know where you live right now, where your country ranks in the list at the moment. I'll see you in one of my next videos. Take care.